hey, uh, I'm not going to ask what's going on because you can't really respond. I don't think you're going to comment on it. So, <laughs> this is my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling Circuit 2010 Alive. I don't know. That's not a very catchy name for a pay per view. But it, it, happened, it took place in December 11, 2010. Osaka, probably the best crowd in Japan. You know, their 6,000 is better than the Tokyo Domes up to 30,000 sometimes, so. They're not old people that sit on their hands. Fucking conservative fans. Uh, the uh, the uh, dark match was King Fali versus, I don't know. It was not even garbage, it was just dull zero. That's like worse than minus, because at least the negative when you get into the negatives, it's funny. This wasn't. It was just, wow. Rather watch paint dry. Seriously, honestly, I watch paint dry. It's better. Then we had Kochi Kanemoto Kochi versus and Nakanishi Manabu versus Taguchi Rusuke and Tame and Tonga. Uh, fun match, 52%. Then we had an actual feud. Uh, type match. Tomohiro Ishii versus Tiger Mask 4. Now Ishii got this nickname the Tiger Hunter because he's trying to take the mask off Tiger Mask and expose it. Kind of ruin it. You know, the hunt. And Tiger Mask, I'm not usually interested in him. <laughs> this It's really intriguing. And Ishii's a pretty good uh, asshole. Yeah, good. Then we had the match a lot of indie fans would be looking forward to. Motor City Machine Guns versus No Limit. Uh, Naito looked like the best performer in this match. Maybe, maybe Saban. Uh, Shelly looked a little off. You know. But yeah, it was, it was alright. It wasn't up to the, the level of any of their other matches they had. I don't know. Motor City Machine Guns are losing uh, stock in my mind. I'd say they have three or four in best tag teams. They're four. They're behind the Young Bucks. Or Generation Me now. Uh, and then we, speaking of great tag teams, we had the IWGP heavyweight tag team titles. Bad intentions of Giant Bernard and Carl Anderson versus the legend Nagata Yuji and Wataru Anoe. Um, yeah, Blue Justice. Great match. Great. Like 86%. Maybe 87%. Everyone looked great. Everyone. On a way too. He looked at, at first he looked like he didn't belong, then he threw a couple heart strikes and I'm like he's small but he belongs. Everyone looking good. Everyone's looking better than last time. Nagata found the fountain of youth and he should get one more run at the title because he's looking really good right now. Everything about this match is done perfectly. Everything. Yeah, then we had Arguably even better a match next for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Champion Prince Devitt versus Davy Richards. It was put as New Japan Lion Devitt versus the American Wolf Richards. Which is it was really good how they did that. Japan actually does good builds, it's just you don't understand Japanese that well. It's not as effective, but still pretty effective. This, this match is really good. It was playing; they were playing on Davy Richards breaking a rib of Prince Devitt at an earlier show, which pretty much got him the title shot. So it's kind of good that he did that. <laughs> Great stuff. You know, it wasn't just the spot, 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 spot. That the crowd was into it. It was great. I have to go with 86 or 87 for this one, too. It's kind of hard to settle on a number, but my enjoyment level was probably equal to tag match, but completely different match. So I enjoyed it quite a bit, thoroughly. Then we had a kind of almost like an ace match. I think it was number one contender for Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, Tanahashi Hiroshi versus 
Goto Hiroki. You know, great match, probably 77%. These guys got an epic match in them. You know, Goto's got to challenge Tanahashi for the world title at a pay per view. I think it would be epic match of the year type stuff. Everyone needs to see this. Then we had the IWGP heavyweight title in the main event. Kojima Satoshi, the champion, versus uh, Hungry Challenger and Nakamura Shinsuke. And Nakamura may be the greatest wrestler in, in Japan. It's, he's definitely one of the greatest in the world. He, he, knows, he knows how to do everything. His body language is way far superior to Randy Orton's, who's praised for his. He doesn't speak a word of English in his interviews. He hardly even has interviews where he speaks Japanese. And he does more talking than anyone else with his body than they do with their voice. <laughs> you know, Kojima's good too. He played the heel stuff up good. He had douchebag, blonde haired uh, Tai Chi or whatever in his corner, who I fucking hate. He should stay in Mexico. It made him even more hated. You know, all the crowd was with Nakamura. He had great counters, stiffness. He had everything you could want. Slow and predictability in there. Good stuff. Overall, I give the show about 8.25 out of 10. Very easy to watch. Sat through it all at once. And I had a busy day, and I didn't get to watch it till late, so it's saying a lot that I could watch that. Okay, now we have a bonus review for more mainstream fans, and for myself, too, because I watched it. I've obviously got to review it. It was WWE Satan's Prison DVD, the Elimination Chamber Anthology, all the matches so far. So the first match was the legendary World Heavyweight title match between Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Rob Van Dam, Kane, and Booker T. Perfectly booked. Just great match. About 98%, maybe 100. Incredible. It's five-star territory. It came down to Michaels and Triple H, and I don't want to spoil it for everyone, because most of you have probably seen it still, but people that haven't it would ruin it. Perfect. Perfect. You need to watch it. And then we had World Heavyweight title match from SummerSlam of the next year. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H versus Randy Orton versus Chris Jericho versus Goldberg versus Kevin Nash. Now this is very different with the new WCW signings and WCW folded. Their contracts expired by the Time Warner or whatever. And yeah, this was just good stuff. Nash and Goldberg were kept to a minimum, which hit their weak wrestling. They did what they needed to do. Triple H was a dastardly heel. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Jericho were great. They were the wrestling in the match. Then we had the World Heavyweight title, the match that arguably made Batista a star. Uh, Triple H versus Edge versus Benoit versus Jericho versus Orton versus Batista. What can I say? It's about 92%. Very underrated. Excellent match. Awesome crowd. It was in Puerto Rico. Holy shit, they need to go there more often. I know there's risk getting piss spilled on you, getting knifed a few hundred times, but hey, Puerto Rico's fucking awesome. And then we had the WWE Championship uh, match from New Year's Revolution. It's kind of famous for its aftermatch stuff. Cena versus Angle versus Michaels versus Chris Masters versus Carlito versus Kane. Now, Chris Masters and Carlito worked very well together. Proof that two heads are better than one, right? Great stuff. Angle was so over. So over. Anyone he would face would get booze, even Shawn Michaels. Angle was the most over man in WWE at that point. The only man I could compare to him was Undertaker. No one else got those reactions. Go back and watch. I watched every show that in that around that time. No one topped Angle. He was the biggest star in WWE. Somehow TNA fucked up with him. But it's TNA, so you know. Enough about that. And then we had our first extreme elimination chamber from WWE's ECW brand. Obviously Vince McMahon thinking all, all ECW was his weapons. The, you know, this match was pretty good. It was CM Punk versus Test versus Hardcore Holly. 
versus Rob Van Dam versus Big Show versus Lashley. Yeah, Lashley. Yeah, you know, it was good for what it was. It was about 64%. Oh, enjoyable enough. Shit booking, though. Seriously, that was his problem. But then we had our SmackDown number one contendership at WrestleMania Elimination Chamber, which pretty much made the Royal Rumble mean shit. It was Undertaker versus Batista versus MVP versus Finley versus Kali versus Big Daddy Huge Tits, Viscera, whatever you want to call them. They got Viscera and Kali out perfect amount of time. Hit their uselessness a little bit. Everyone did great in this. Finley was very good in this. Batista, MVP did his part. Batista and The Undertaker's feud went through this. They started and ended the match. That is a phone. And I'll answer it later. So, yeah, you know, great stuff. Uh, Undertaker, yeah, Undertaker and Batista ended it, and uh, Undertaker did win, and he would go on to face Edge. Great match. Everyone should watch it. Then we had our Raw number one contendership. Again, making the Royal Rumble not matter, kind of. It was Shawn Michaels versus Jericho versus Triple H versus Umaga. Umaga, great, great Samoan wrestler. Versus Jeff Hardy versus. JBL. Everything was good. Umaga looked like a star in this. JBL looked good in this. The only person that didn't look great in this, he did, was Jeff Hardy. I Even when Jeff Hardy was in his prime, he was not that good. He was really not that good. Guys like Triple H made him look like a fucking star. And what did he do? He acted like he was the star. Fuck Jeff Hardy. Fuck Jeff Hardy. Great match. Great ending. Everything was great about it. But 90%. Now we then we had a WWE title match. Undertaker versus Triple H versus Edge versus Big Show versus Hardy versus Koslov. Really shocking start here. Edge was pinned in the first, I think it was four minutes of the match. <laughs> Which and he was the champion, so it changed everything. The ending was great, it came down to Triple H and Undertaker. These guys should have had another match at WrestleMania. They have such good chemistry. They can do more in 5-10 minutes than most guys can do in 25 with each other. Then we had a World Heavyweight title. John Cena champion versus Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio versus Kane versus Kofi Kingston versus Mike Gennarox with a beard. You know, Jeff Hardy was obviously the weakest link in this match. It was still a strong match, about 90%. Great ending. Uh, Kofi got fucked up on the way and Edge hit himself in the chamber and ended up getting into the match. You have to watch to see whether he won or not. You know, this is higher than that. It's about 95%. I don't know why I rated it so low. Yeah, and then we had the, fi the final two matches. The, the final match was the WWE title Randy Orton versus Triple H versus John Cena versus. The, the champion Sheamus versus Kofi Kingston versus DiBiase. This time Kofi was actually in it. This is about 67%. Too sudden some of the things, you know. It was very good. Maybe it was 70. But yeah. Hopefully the Elimination Chamber matches don't keep getting worse and worse and they end up being at the level that they should be at. So these have been my reviews and my Fighting Spirit Award for it's more than a month. Prince Devitt, because he had the broken ribs and you wouldn't know if he didn't say anything about them. And they incorporated them well in the story, so it was good. Anyway, yeah, that was me. I had a few distractions, but I still did this anyway because it was like my third take. Everyone, have a good time unless you're a complete douchebag. I've been Sean Carlton and I'm out.